Good morning, everybody. It's Kayla Sahalter, and I just wanted to show you what I was doing this morning. I've got a couple produce growers that I do some consulting for, and one of them is a sweet corn grower. And even though they do have some traded corn, um, we're still really looking for insects and scouting diligently because any kind of physical appearance that would be less than desirable on the sweet corn will deter people from buying it at the store. So we're trying to trying to get ahead of those things. We do make more pesticide applications, more herbicide applications, just because we are trying to keep that product as pretty, I guess you could say, as possible, blemish free. Um, so here I'm actually looking for a black cut worm. And this is a sticky trap, it's a wing, wing trap, so the insects, the black cut worm moths fly through here and they get caught. The bottom part right here is sticky like a mouse trap. So right now I've only got some flies in there. Last week I was catching a few, but this helps me get a better idea of what is out there and where to scout first and prioritize. Um, black cut worms are usually more of an issue in smaller corn. When it's emerging up to V3, this corn behind me, if you can see, is V6. So we just got side dressed the end of last week. So we're really outside of that window. We have to worry about cutworm, but we're gonna walk over here a little bit. And the next issue after looking for cutworm would possibly be armyworm damage. So there are actually two kinds of armyworm. There's armyworm, like true armyworms. There's fall armyworms that we see closer to harvest. But what we're going to be concerned is as the sweet corn gets closer to tassel, as it actually starts to tassel, army worms will come in and the larvae, the insects will feed inside of the whorl of the corn and actually kill and damage the tassel. And if that happens, it will not pollinate. Um, it will not shed pollen. And most of the time, the ear development could be off too because there's not gonna be anything on that plant. We're going to have to rely on the plant next to it to pollinate that ear specifically. So here is what the army worm traps look like. Up here in the top right here, there's a pheromone trap inside. You can see that little tiny gray, looks like a pencil eraser inside the top there. So that pheromone is putting out scent and drawing those army worm moths in. And then there's a funnel trap inside here and I'm gonna try and set my phone up so you guys can watch me open it. See how good this works. So I take the lid off of here and show you guys. So this trap is actually empty. Inside of here there's also another pheromone just trying to help draw those moths in. The two traps I checked beforehand each had one in it so with the, the winds and the rain events we've had coming up from the south it's no surprise that we are starting to have some army worm mobs come into the area and that's something I'm just gonna have to keep an eye on when those counts get really high, that definitely is a red flag. Go scout this field now. So I'll keep you updated as we go throughout the summer, but that's what I do um, three times a week. I check the traps for half hour, an hour, um, and then that lets me know early on right now what I need to scout and prioritize. Um, as we get later into the season, like I said, we're, we're V6 right here as we get closer to tassel. I'll be walking this corn and in it a lot more just to make sure we are keeping a very close eye on any insect damage and making sure if we are seeing disease that we're spreading a fungicide too because when you buy sweet corn at the store you don't want to see the tip of it <clears throat> chewed off by insects you don't want to see the husk discolored so that's those are all different things that the grower is keeping an eye on and trying to make sure that it looks as desirable as possible thanks